Hello everybody and welcome back to War Thunder and today we are playing in the Japanese once again starting with the KI-27 because we've got a little bit of a double dose of gameplay today which is great. Now I was a little bit unsure about what to do a video on today so eventually after a lot of debating uh, I was eventually left with this, the low tier Japanese aircraft mentioned before that the Japanese are one of the most fun tech trees in the game, at least for their fighters anyway. They have a trend of being fairly fragile, at least structurally, but make up for it with okay speed, pretty good armament, and excellent, if not unparalleled, maneuverability. Now the KR-27 is an interesting one in War Thunder. It has been pushed around in terms of its battle rating over the years. It used to be at 1.3, where it performed a little too well I suppose because it ended up getting moved up. It's decently fast at about 300 miles an hour, but the thing that already always held, held it back was the armament, the two 7.7mm machine guns. Don't hit very hard and it has been buffed a little bit now, but when you first unlocked them, when you first unlocked a plane with these guns, they jammed oh so quickly, especially in arcade. And it was very frustrating. And once you've mastered them, once they're fully upgraded, even then they only perform okay. There's nothing special. Now the KI-27 sits at the battle rating of 2.0 because it's agility just allows it to keep up with if not out turn even the agile biplanes it was a little unstoppable in that regard although this here is the premium version of the KI-27 which is for some reason at the battery rating of 1.7 so a little bit of cheating but oh well I will take any advantage I get fundamentally though these planes are too uh, identical basically now we're lining up on the Dornier 17Z here, he's being sprayed by our SU-6, sorry, SU-2. And we've moved into the periscope view, which is a unique feature that this plane gets. Rarely get to use it though, because you have to be pretty much flying straight and shooting someone that is flying straight to make it effective. Unfortunately, we don't end up getting the kill despite we set him on fire and the SU-2 finishes them off, but that's okay. This plane was never really built for going after bombers anyway. It's excellent at going after fighters though. So we're trying not to overspeed, pulling some fancy turns in the dive here, lining up on this Heinkel 112. Easy kill, see what I mean? The guns aren't all bad. And now that Heinkel 112, an otherwise superior aircraft in terms of speed, has kind of made an error. He doesn't have any speed here and now he has fallen victim to my superior agility. You can see how quickly this thing turns. That is one of the best turn times in the entire game, though that's... But at the same time, this dogfight here also demonstrates the rather weak armament, as you can see how long it takes to finish this guy up. And there we go, finally goes down. Now for our next target. Already at two kills and one assist pretty good but a p400 now that is a serious threat that's how you can tell i've been fully up to it vastly superior plane one of the fastest planes that you'll fight at this br but that doesn't mean i won't take them on anyway it's just another one to take down i would go for the catalina because well that's a bomber so it's probably going to drain our resources our victory points but as I mentioned before, this plane wasn't really designed with going after bombers in mind. And the weak armament means that you'll drain the 1,000 rounds of ammo quite quickly. But it seems like the P400 now wants to go head on. He's lining up. Get a good hit. Managed to avoid taking major damage myself. And before he can fly anywhere, I'm already on his tail. This Japanese aircraft is made of just some mysterious materials. And there's just nothing he can do. He's at my mercy. Unless I fluff all my shots and run out of ammo. 
and then eventually we get a fire on him, which is good. Catalina's making it easy and coming to us, though. I'm not sure what his plan is. Don't have enough ammo to realistically finish him off, so I'm going to have to hope for a fire, and we get a fire. Very good result. Or is this a HS-123? It's a German biplane dive bomber. Now, I've actually officially expended the rest of my ammo as I take that shot. It takes us some damage. Now I've got no choice but to return to base, leaving it all down to this I-15 here, who is doing a pretty good job of keeping them busy. Now I begin my long trek back to base. We have made it down. And we're all safe and sound. The Stuka has been spotted. He's in pursuit by the I-15. And now, we're ready for round two. So as an update on battle progress, the JU-87, the Stuka, did eventually get into a full-on fight with the I-15. The Stuka's armament, along with the AI anti-aircraft guns, did eventually finish off the I-15, which leaves me and the Beaufort. The Beaufort is going for the enemy bases, of course, and I am going to wait for the Stuka to approach, hopefully giving me the opportunity to take him down once and for all. In order to make myself useful, I need to find something to do while I wait for that Stuka to come back. This aircraft doesn't carry any secondary weapons, and it only has two 7.7mm machine guns, which is not all that effective against ground targets either, unless you know which ground targets you're shooting at. It is possible to kill the artillery or the anti-aircraft guns, of course, but you've got to be quite cautious with how much ammo you use per gun because they're not going to be as damaging as other weapons. However, these SPGs can be killed. Normally you'd need like a very heavy weapon to kill these SPGs, but if you didn't know, you can actually kill SPGs in aerialistic battles with any of your weapons, as you can see my light machine guns just by shooting the open top section. Now SPGs, uh, I'm not sure which ones these are, I'm pretty sure these are German Hummel SPGs. So you shoot into the, op the open fighting compartments, take them out. There are other SPGs in aerialistic battles, most notably the Stug 3, or Stug 4 is one of the two. But that one obviously not an open top vehicle, so the way to kill that one is to shoot sides or the rear. Now a bit of a heartbreak, probably should have been commenting on the fact that I was getting hammered by anti-aircraft fire at the time, which is uh, not good, a bit embarrassing, and uh, unfortunately We end up dying, which is not good, and now there's pretty much no one left to kill the Stuka. There is a Beaufort, but the Beaufort lets us down as well, so very much a heartbreak in that case. So despite an excellent game, we ended up coming short, and we didn't quite achieve victory. I probably cost us that game by foolishly killing myself, dying to the hands of the artillery. Uh, I guess the Beaufort did the same. Had he stayed alive, then we would have won our victory points, but unfortunately it wasn't to be. Not to worry, however, because in order to cover up my embarrassing defeat in the last round, we uh, stepped it up a notch and bought out the KI-43-1 a Japanese light fighter at the battle rating of 2.3. It is uh, effectively the successor to the KI-27, although this is the first modification of the aircraft. I only took this one out compared to the uh, KI-43, the KI-43-2, because this one has a rather fetching camouflage on, as you can see here. Now, the KI-43 is, as I mentioned, the successor to the KI-27. Both vehicles were used most successfully in the war against China during the Second World War. The KI-27 in particular was very effective against Chinese I-16s and I-15s as its unparalleled maneuverability allowed it to be very much superior 
in a dogfight. The Ki-43 improved upon the aircraft whilst all the same continuing to maintain its best trait, the maneuverability. Obviously being a bigger aircraft it's not quite as good at it. It also has some features which helped soften the weak points of the Ki-27 such as increased speed, increased firepower in particular. So we're flying here armed and ready. Speaking of that increased firepower, we have now two 12.7 millimeter machine guns, 250 cals, which is good. Now, this is one of the interesting planes in this game. This is the rare case of a plane where you can actually upgrade the guns. This plane actually starts with two 7.7 millimeter machine guns, but you can actually unlock bigger guns to replace them. This plane with two 7.7 millimeter machine guns would be very weak at 2.3, especially in an up tier, you're going to struggle to do damage with those, but you could probably make it work because of the plane's good maneuverability, but boy oh boy do the 50 cows help so much more. Uh, when I first unlocked it, it was a world of difference. But we're entering combat now, and there's a couple of CW-21s, a very irritating Chinese aircraft. So we must silence him, although uh, probably no need considering our team just swarmed him, and although we did lose someone in the process, he is definitely not going to recover from that. There's another one coming down. He spotted me, so I think I'm going to have to divert my attention to him. See if I can maybe catch him as he's pulling away. He wants me to stall. That Chinese aircraft, very much known for its good rate of climb, uh, tier for tier, and good agility. But that good agility is not going to help as much against the Japanese aircraft because I also have good agility. We're diving down here to join the fray against the other fighters. CW-21 is gaining, but I'm going to have to keep that in the back of my mind for now. There's an I-16 who's nearby, potentially an easy kill. Close the distance, open up, and get some good hits on, and eventually cut his wing off. Kill number one. Now at high speeds, unfortunately, the Ki-43, uh, the rudder tends to lock up, which is not good. But that didn't stop me from getting two kills now, easily decimating that BF-109. Now time for revenge on the CW-21. Can't quite get the lead on him, but I can loop round. And he is no longer able to escape as quickly. If uh, if I had not been here, then these bigger, bulkier, faster planes might not have been able to keep up with him in the dogfight. But thankfully, I am here. Cut his wing off. Force him into a spin. Try not to shoot my teammate in the process. And down he goes. Stuka over there. And in the distance, you can see a JU-88 being shot out the sky by our 109. Our team has done very well. It may be half in number, but the enemy team is even less. That Stuka gets taken care of pretty much without my my assistance. But with three kills in and there, in the distance, the last enemy plane. It's one on one. Good old head on. And I get a pilot snipe. And his, all sorts of bits come off him. But unfortunately, I am on fire. In fact, I am dying. Slash dead. But not to worry. He was the last guy. A noble end. And a redeeming victory after that first game. First game was a heartbreak. And while I did die both times, the second game was a unanimous victory for the Ki-43 aka the Hayabusa and here it is mighty aircraft that I would recommend you play if you have any other aircraft that you want me to play then let me know in the comments below in addition if you like the video then consider hitting that like button but until then I'll catch you next time with some more War Thunder gameplay